questions and strategies on how to move forward are swirling for Democrats and Republicans alike. Biden and a number of top Democrats are now throwing their weight behind VP Kamala Harris in an attempt to rally voters concerned about the president's age and to stop Donald Trump from claiming a second term at the White House. Greetings, everyone. Vice President Kamala Harris stepping into the brightest political spotlight of her career. Our President Joe Biden wanted to be here today. Harris becoming a presidential candidate overnight following President Joe Biden's stunning announcement Sunday to drop out of the 2024 race. Earlier this morning, Harris paying tribute to the president's first term record. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. With just three and a half months until Election Day, Harris is now running full steam ahead with Biden's full support and endorsement in hand, as well as endorsements from several other top Democrats, including former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. You decided not to run, and so I decided uh, to support uh, Vice President Harris. I support Vice President Harris. When you're up against a convicted felon, who better than a former prosecutor to take it straight to Donald Trump? I fully support Kamala Harris. And in fact, she's been trained by the best. Among those endorsing Harris include high-profile Democrats widely seen as having presidential aspirations of their own or ending up on a future Harris vice presidential shortlist. The vice president is ready. She has my full endorsement. I'm going to do everything I can to support her. Two other top Dems, Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries, have praised Harris but stopped short of an endorsement. And she's even received endorsements from celebrities, including from British pop singer Charlie XCX, who tweeted Kamala is a brat, referring to her new album of the same name and the brat girl summer trend the album has spawned. Now, it may not sound like a compliment, but we promise it is, and it seems her team is embracing it. The campaign for Harris raised a stunning $81 million in just 24 hours following Biden's announcement, and she'll be able to access the $96 million already in the campaign coffer. Biden's remarkable decision this weekend coming after he was presented with polling that showed his path to victory was basically non-existent. The decision so closely held that even senior most advisors barely getting a heads up. In a letter addressed to the American people, Biden writing, it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. And it comes after Biden had insisted for weeks he was staying in the race. Well, let me say this as clear as I can. I'm staying in the race. If the Lord Almighty came out and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'll get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee in the Democratic Party, okay? I listen to them. There have been so many ups and downs and unprecedented times this election, it feels like this whole scenario could be a sitcom. Wait a minute. I'm not leaving. POTUS is leaving. He's not gonna run for a second term. I'm gonna run. Oh. <laughs> So what is next for the race to the White House? To discuss, we're joined now by Stephen Farnsworth, director of the Center of Leadership and Media Studies at the University of Mary Washington. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. Glad to be here. We're in a bit of uncharted territory here. An incumbent president has never dropped out of the race this close to an election. What does the process look like to find him a replacement? Well, you're absolutely right. This is something that is unprecedented. Never has a president ever uh, abandon a campaign at this point. The, the election's just a little more than 100 days away. Uh, so what's going to happen now? Um, all indications are that Vice President Harris has uh, got the inside track to be the nominee. Uh, some of the leading potential rivals to her have decided to back her and not run themselves. And so it looks like the eventual convention in a few weeks will be a, a coronation, more or less, for the uh, vice president. What do you expect Harris's campaign to look like in the coming weeks as she prepares to to take on Donald Trump. 
Well, I think that one of the things that we've learned is that age is a very effective weapon to use against a presidential candidate over the age of 75. There still remains one candidate in this election who is over 75, uh, and that's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is now the oldest uh, candidate in American history to have received a major party presidential nomination. And I think that uh, some of the arguments that the Republicans have used against Joe Biden, who's only three years older than Donald Trump, will now be turned against uh, the Republican nominee. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think that uh, that will be a key challenge for the uh, for the Republicans now answering the very questions uh, that they asked just a few weeks ago. Now we're looking to see who Harris will pick as a running mate. Some of the top contenders like Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer have already said they're not going to join the ticket. What do you think Harris is looking for in a VP? Well, I think that you can expect that the vice presidential nominee will come from one of the half dozen or so swing states that are out there where uh, Democrats and Republicans are roughly evenly matched, according to the polls. Um, you might see uh, Senator Kelly from, Alice, from Arizona. That was one of the closest states in the 2020 election. He's a former astronaut uh, and uh, offers an opportunity to do well in a state that um, was really close four years ago. Another possibility is, uh, is Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania. Governor Shapiro uh, also uh, comes from a key swing state. Pennsylvania is one of the biggest close states in the 2020 election as well. And elections tend to be won and lost in the American uh, industrial heartland. So a, a Shapiro choice might also encourage uh, Democrats in Wisconsin and Michigan to uh, back the Harris campaign. And my final question for you, Stephen, Biden is stepping out of the race, but still has several months left in his presidency. How do you see this move impacting the remainder of his term and his legacy? Well, it'll be really interesting to see how this, this develops. Um, obviously, the president will do everything he can to help the Democrats win uh, the election in November, not only at the presidential level, but at a congressional level. And so the, he will be uh, deployed in ways that will be useful to the party. Um, there's no doubt about that. I think that one of the uh, interesting things that Joe Biden uh, may have to contribute to politics is what happens after the election. Once the election is over, of course, Joe Biden will be a, a president for another two months, and that'll be an opportunity to put forward executive orders, to make decisions with respect to um, policies and uh, framing uh, that can be of use to uh, to the um, to the Democrats, depending win or lose, um, the different choices that he might make uh, could be very useful. Um, in particular, I think in the next few months, uh, what Biden would do would be to serve to bring issues up to the table that would be very useful for the Democrats. Um, I think that one of the things that Biden has talked about is a um, is a law that would bar um, convicted felons from running from office. This would br bring attention to the fact that we now have a uh, presidential nominee who is a convicted felon, uh, and we'll see uh, how those de developments uh, take shape in the time ahead. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Thank you. Have a good one.